Yo guys, I'm HP, this is Dr. Pink and today's topic is High Energy Shuffle Blues Riff. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification and also join the HP Crazy Guitar Academy. What are we talking about today? It seems simple, but it ain't. Yo, and so on. This sucker here <laughs> is a 150 BPM. Seems to be simple, it seems to be something which you already know, but uh, you need to f know a few tricks about this to get this thing really grooving and rolling. Because you know, when you go up to 150 BPM, s things start to get s hypersonic and things start to move, and um, we're going to talk about this in detail. So let's get started. Okay, so this uh, is a regular shuffle blues in E, um, regular 12 bar shuffle blues with this riff here. <laughs> this is the main riff, so we have a E5. One, one, and two, and three, and four, and one. So it's really a regular riff. That's the main riff. On A it's the same thing. Back to E. We connect between E and A like this. So we have one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four one and two and three and four and then we go to A. Back to E. Now we're going to B, and here we have to move up here in the seventh fret. And some guys of you might ask, why not to the second fret? Well, the reason is pretty simple. Um, when you play it in this speed and you want to have still have it really grooving, you really need to have. Um, special picking technique you know you really need to swing through you know this from stevie ray Vaughan, probably uh, you really need to just swing through the strings <laughs> and you make the accent in the swinging so one and two and three and four as you can hear on two and four because the snare as you can hear also the two and four and you have to be really precise on the snare and that's one of the tasks uh, in this high energy uh, shuffle blues guitar riff so <laughs> so really give this kick and out of the relaxed swinging arm give this extra kick and the, the challenge in fact is that you only hit the strings which you're supposed to hit and the pick doesn't fall out of your hands. <laughs> it's um, If you don't play this stuff every night, like a few hours, probably you have few difficulties that the pick stays in your hands, you know? Because you really have this, this twang in your arm. Because then this whole thing starts to swing and roll. Because one of the problems which you have in this speed 
if you're not completely precise, you will not groove. And the other problem is you have no room for error at all because there's no time left to fix the error. So you really need to focus to get the whole thing done and that the pick doesn't fall out of your hand, you know? Okay? And also when you do this run up, you don't only go up, you make this twang too. So one, two, three, two. You also make this twang and you make these slight pull-offs. As you can hear, and this to get this movement and that you only hit that string and not the others. You also need to damp the other string, the A string here. When you go to A, you need to get into a position where you damp the low E string and still keep the mo momentum in your uh, picking arm going on and this without any room for error. So everything has to be, mm, that's the real challenge of this. The stuff seems to be easy. But to get this thing through, like for three, four choruses, without the, your picking falling out of your hand or you moving out of position, that's really a challenge. And you need to practice this a little bit and get this special twang, you know? Now see, I, I switch it too late. I mean, even I really have to watch careful. So when it you need to count at the beginning that you don't fall out. So one, two, one, two, three, four. When you go to B, if you want to have this, now we come to, that's where I started. This B is harder to damp than this one here. And that's why if you really have these high speed shuffle things grooving, you probably do the chords on the low E string and low A string because then you really can do this momentum with your picking on this twang. <laughs> You can ask the guy, the, the rhythm guitar player of Status Quo, he unfortunately passed away a few years ago. He once made a tutorial and he said exactly that. You have to do this on these low two strings because there you can really twang it through. And if this guy doesn't know who played 30 years rhythm guitar like this, then nobody knows. <laughs> And now the ending phrase or the final phrase is this, well, the standard one, but again, it's challenging because you need to have the thing going on in this high tempo. So zero, four, zero, you again make this slight pull-offs. And you end up in the B7. And then you go back without any time for rest. Everything has to be really relaxed and if you somehow get a cramp in your arm, then you're out of the game, so you better get this thing really moving. Did you notice at the end I fell out because my pick fell out of my hand I needed to correct the position? That's why I mentioned that point because that's really a task. I didn't, I didn't expect that after these many years of playing guitar. Holding the pick in this tune here is quite a challenge. So if you're able to play without pick, I, I tested it, it also works, and then um, you're probably more precise but not as accentuated as with the pick, but there you don't have this problem, it also works. like it so much but it works okay a second thing you can do 
but it's also challenging. You make this rhythm figure with these chords. Now you go to the neck pickup. So one, two, three, four, one, two, and three. So one, two, three, four, one, 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 two, three, four, one, two, and three, four. That will be the rhythm figure, and we're using these chords E9 here, 6th fret, 7, 7, 7. Then we go to A13, is a bar in the 5th, index, uh, middle finger in the 6th, ring in the 7th. And the B13 is like this. Same thing, you have to be really precise. When you want to switch between the two guitars, you again have the problem that you don't lose the timing and all this stuff. But um, as I already said at the beginning of this tutorial, um, the speed is the challenge. The riff, you probably already know, it's nothing special. But to get all these momentums going on, get the proper damping and don't, you have no room for error because you hear it immediately as you heard when befo just before uh, <laughs> the, the pick started to move in my fingers. And then I need to make this small correction and then I just fell out of the groove. Yo guys, that was <laughs> High Energy uh, Shuffle Blues Guitar Riff. Um, <coughs> not more to say, you really need, really need to practice and listen to the guys who play that stuff all night. I played in a rock and roll band for two years. At the beginning of my career, played this every night. And I can tell the tricks, which I just mentioned now, um, that helps you to get through this and always keep the groove even when it gets fast. And um, if you want to practice this stuff, I made this backing track here for you guys that you can practice this, that you get, you know, the main thing is just to stay relaxed. Even if you can keep up the tempo and you're not relaxed here in your arm, <laughs> also in your wrist, then you will not make it too long because you will fall out the thing like after two minutes when your arm starts to cramp, you really need to stay relaxed. Oh yeah! And always stay relaxed that you don't get a cramp after two minutes. That's the main thing. Yo, you can download this backing track plus the tabs if you need them. Also, the second uh, rhythm guitar it's available in the HP Crazy Guitar Committee. If you love the work which me and Dr. Pink are doing, please join there. Please make a premium member upgrade in order to support all the work which we are doing. It's not only to download this stuff, you know. Yeah, you know it. So, me and Dr. Pink are saying goodbye. <laughs>